Right now, I'm having about 30,000 pictures here in my Lightroom catalog, which is, let's call it roughly sorted, and none of them is really adding any value financially or to my portfolio. So instead of getting all the photos dusty on the hard drive, which is actually dusty, I decided to go for a little risky experiment and give them away for free. In the next weeks, I'm going to work myself through this 30,000 picture chaos and choose 100 to upload them to free stock pages like Unsplash and Pexels in order to find out if the broad audience it is displayed to leads to any positive outcomes. There are obviously no immediate financial returns of giving your photos away for free, but on the internet there are quite a few thoughts on how to potentially monetize pages like Unsplash and Pexels, and we're going to have a look at that as well. Both are large free stock image sharing platforms where everybody can contribute to. The deal is that whatever you upload is going to be freely available for both commercial and private purposes to any user of the platform. There is absolutely no financial compensation and the end user does not even have to credit the photographer. What Unsplash actually does offer is a huge audience. Just two to three weeks ago, I gave it a bit of a pre-trial and uploaded 20 random pictures, which by now gathered already like 2.7 million views and 18,000 downloads. Within the next weeks, we're taking the rest 80 and make it around number of 100 and see what happens. Uploading to Unsplash and Pexels is pretty simple. On your profile, you just go to either upload or submit a photo, then choose the files that you would like to contribute, drag it in, and start with your meta description in terms of tags and adding a title. Once you have done that without too much effort, you're pretty much ready to go and can hit submit. Right after, you will see that the new photos are showing up in your gallery. Today is June 3rd and I'm, after going through my Lightroom library for a while, ready to upload the first five pictures of this experiment. The pictures are already up in Unsplash and I have added the tags, a short title and marked the location where the photo was taken. I'm actually feeling a bit excited right now. It's going to be an interesting experiment and now we're just one click away from starting it. So let's hit the submit button together and get the five first photos up. I thought it could be a good idea to split the 10 photos into two uploads per week. So I'm going to do that for the next eight weeks. To be honest, I've been uploading a few more pictures than expected in the first seven days. So now the first 20 are online. On Unsplash, we are right now at 4.7 million views and 27,000 downloads. Despite having the same amount of pictures up on Pexels as well, we are standing at 368,000 views, which is less than a tenth of what we got on Unsplash. What I do like about Pexels is that they also have an all time and a 30 day ranking. So you can see how you're performing compared to other contributors and right now there we're standing on place 16,900 in the all time ranking and place 98 in the 30 day ranking. In the meantime of this waiting game, I thought it would be nice to have a look at how to potentially monetize free stock platforms and make the one or other dollar on the go. If you go for a quick round of Google, there are quite a few approaches, but it all kind of comes down to four ways of making money. Donations, project work, ad campaigns and selling higher resolution images. Donations are pretty straightforward. 
both Unsplash and Pexels have an option to use your PayPal email for direct donations through the platform. So if somebody likes your work and they go to your profile, then in the bio you will see a support via PayPal option that the people then can click and directly donate to you. You set it up once, I'm not sure how many people are going to donate, but if something comes, that could be a nice add-on. Project work is a bit more complicated, but as I understand it from some of the blogs where people write about their work on Unsplash is that they have been discovered for they are photos and then companies and individuals have been reaching out to get them to work together. So pretty much regular marketing as if somebody would reach out to you on your Instagram account. One tip that I found on one of the blogs was recommending not to upload the highest resolution of your image. So that if it is downloaded and used for a specific purpose and then the user thinks about maybe making a bigger print can ask you for the highest resolution and you can then sell it later on. I have been using the tactic on pretty much all of my images and have restricted the file size to about 60% of the potential maximum file size. The last option is to be part of a dedicated ad campaign. If you are browsing the main feed of Unsplash, it will not take you long to see any sponsored images. Like this one here from one of the creators for MailChimp. Basically, a company will run a few photos uh, that are sponsored and therefore constantly in the main feed of Unsplash and they can choose a few creators that then produce their images for it. Just if you are, for example, a tech creator and your main contributions are gadgets and devices, then I think in this regard, the chances are pretty high to actually end up in one of the campaigns. Today is the 29th of June and we are over halfway through our experiment. It is now 26 days since we started this and the overall revenue is zero dollars. Which isn't too surprising in that short of a time span. So instead of worrying about this, let's have a look at what the stats are doing. Starting with Unsplash, we are going to have a look at the old time stats which is right now a staggering 9.2 million views and 58,000 downloads. If you scroll a bit down on this site, you will get some more information of how your photos were used. Mine were mainly used at Figma, which is a... What was Figma again? An interface design tool. Yeah, mainly used at Figma, a bit at Medium, Mailchimp and Buzzfeed and of course also Notion. Every kind of page where you have this direct integration with Unsplash, so where people like on Medium can just directly use the Unsplash library, for example, for the header image or any imagery of a blog entry. Apart from the use cases, there are also a list of milestones. One of them is 25 featured images. Featured images are the ones that were from the Unsplash team selected to be in the editorial feed. Depending on what kind of ranking you have as a creator, your pictures that you upload to the platform get processed either a bit faster or slower. The editorial feed of Unsplash is basically their homepage. So if you get selected in the editorial feed, then you'll find your pictures right there. Every photo that is selected in the editorial feed gets a much higher exposure of views and downloads. Just to put this into perspective, we're speaking in a comparison of maybe 1000 views or 2 to 600,000 views. In total, 41 out of my 80 pictures got selected for the editorial feed, which is a quote that I am quite happy with. 
but let's head over to Pexels and see how it is going there. We are still at about a tenth of the actual view count of Unsplash, which is right now 1.1 million views. If I remember correctly, then we started at an all-time rank of 16,900 and are now down to 11,000. Pretty much all the images that I uploaded to Pexels have been featured, but it took quite a while until the one day that I got an email. Coming to the Mac in the morning, I found an email that was inviting me to the Pexels Heroes, which I obviously accepted. You probably see it right here at the website. The Pexels Heroes is an invite-only community made up of the best and most trusted photographers of the platform. One big benefit of being part of the Heroes is that your pictures that you submit get reviewed faster and get featured faster. There are quite a few perks listed for being a Pexels hero, but what I kinda noted for now is the special profile badge that you get on your user, which is a blue star icon next to your profile picture, and faster photo reviews. I have not really seen any exclusive perks, haven't met any fellow members, had uh, no product update so far, and I haven't been notified if any of my pictures got used on a big website. That is maybe to come, so let's see what the other uploads are going to bring. It has now been 10 days since my last upload and I think we are ready to draw some conclusions. I ended up getting 12.4 million views and 84,000 downloads on Unsplash, while Pexels brought in 8.3 million views and 15,000 downloads. I don't really know how many people followed me on Unsplash, but on Pexels I ended up getting 332 followers. During the last part of this experiment, Pexels really took off in terms of views as two of my pictures were featured on their homepage. But what actually made me much more happy is the fact that these views were enough to get me onto place number one in the 30 day ranking and place number 3300 in the all time ranking. And now that things have calmed down a little, I'm averaging out at around 100,000 daily views on Unsplash and 300,000 daily views on Pexels. I assume that these numbers could be quite consistent depending on how my pictures rank in the individual search engines. And now, drumroll, we did receive our first donation. It was through Pexels and it was $4. A nice add-on is also that quite a few of the images were tweeted in kind of a thank you form on Twitter and used on Instagram with actually tagging my account, which in theory none of the accounts would have to do. If the last few weeks showed me one thing, then that in the short term, even if you are very successful on the platform, it is not so likely to develop into a new revenue stream for you as a creator. That brings up an obvious question, if you should still consider contributing. If everything you want as a photographer or model is to have your work or your face seen on the internet, then I do think free stock image platforms were made for you. Maybe it's time to think a bit morally about it and one could argue that if you give your work away for free, then there would be less potential gigs for paid work for photographers. The question is, would it outweigh the positive benefits of contributing your work to people that couldn't afford it and get it seen? I'm not 100% sure and you definitely have to figure that one out for yourself. What I do know though is that this experiment made me go through my whole Lightroom library streamline it and take pictures that I would normally just edit roughly and made it into something that I can stand behind and am kinda proud of. And that was even the case for pictures from a few years ago that I normally would rarely ever see again. Just that fact alone made it worth it for me. I really do think that I will continue contributing even though way less frequent, whenever I have some pictures that I think 
deserve a bit more of a purpose than being on my hard drive. Now you hopefully got an insight of what it could mean to contribute your photos to free stock pages and maybe I'll see you there.